of a bonobo here. Oh my God, you are educated. New York knows bonobos. New York. Well, I, I, you know, it could be like your, your sort of state representative. I guess. That's right. But I, I don't need to then explain really very much about them, but they share 98.7% of our DNA. And I think a lot of the reason for the confusion is that, firstly, they look a lot like chimpanzees, but I want you all to see, well, you obviously can, but see if you can pick out the difference. So let's just roll the video. So you see some of them have quite pale faces, and these are bonobos, and bonobos, I'm not sure if you can see it very well, but they tend to have pink lips, just like us, so they, have, uh, they don't have the pigment in them. Oh, there they are, some beautiful behavior. Oh. And that's their vocalization, they sound so weird compared <laughs> to chimpanzees. And evolutionarily, I mean, how would you compare chimps to bonobos? Well, I think the most important thing, the most important difference between chimpanzees and bonobos is not so much the physical aspect, but really what's going on inside their heads. And I guess since, you know, this panel is all creatures great and smart, we tend to think of uh, intelligence as a linear scale with humans at the pinnacle. But, um, you know, and my other panelists are going to really sort of demystify this. And, the smartest thing about bonobos, and to me they're one of the most in intelligent animals of all, is that they live in a society with very little violence. Um, unlike, you know, humans and also our other closest living relative, chimpanzees, they don't have war, they don't torture and kill each other, so they don't murder. And something I think is really important is that they're much nicer to their females. So, <laughs> and the females are in charge, which, you know, I think works better in the end. <laughs> so there's very little, so what happens in bonobo society is that the females stick together and so they don't let the males beat them up. And once there was this alpha male, uh, alpha female called Mimi who works at this sanctuary that I'll, I'll show you in a minute. But she was, um, she was just sitting there eating one day and Tatanga, who was a big sort of alpha bonobo, he came up and he had this kind of like big chimpanzee ID that he was gonna behave like a male chimpanzee and just came up and just completely backhanded her across the face, no reason. And she, it was so hard it gave her whiplash, like she just kind of like flicked her head aside and when she came back and looked at him, <laughs> within about two seconds, six, five unrelated females, they weren't related, they, you know, they just lived in the group together, they came and they chased him all the way to the night building and all the way under the forest. So I guess, you know, this kind of behavior in bonobos is just their message to say that one, one male can be stronger than one female, but no male is stronger than five females. So I think that this is just a, a really important lesson from bonobos that we can learn. No, the chimps have this reputation of being these kind of, uh, these fighting, aggressive primates, and the bonobos, as you're describing, have, this, have the opposite reputation. And why is that? I mean, is there any sense as to why the bonobos have or is that, is that even true? Yes, no, it is absolutely true. And I, I think I should just say that I am not a chimpanzee racist. I actually <laughs> know that there are lots of like, wonderful, wonderful things about chimpanzees. Um, you, you know, they, they have emotions like love. If you believe the recent news reports, they mourn their dead. Um, so there is this really wonderful side of them, just like there is this wonderful side to humans. But yes, there is also this darker side. Um, and that's you know, something we have in common with them. So bonobos are really... Uh, um, I think they, they have an important lesson for us. And it's not that I'm saying that we should be more like bonobos because they have a lot of sex with everyone. And I know that's not, you know, there's, I mean, you know, this is a good looking panel, but it's not something that I'm suggesting. So, but I, I think that, you know, we can definitely look at bonobo society and we need to learn more about them because we don't know much about them at all. And so really figuring out what it is about them that allows them to live in a society with very little violence is, is something very important for us to study. So um, I, 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 we work at a, a beautiful sanctuary called Lole Abonobo in Congo. Actually, Klaus works there too. And so um, they live, the bonobos live in this beautiful forest and they come into a building at night where you, know, you saw the previous experiment. And so in the daytime, they live in these 100 acres of forest just outside the capital city of Kinshasa in Congo. And uh, last year, they had the world's first bonobo release, but I just wanted to show you a video of how beautiful it is and to see if you can get an appreciation for really what wonderful animals they are. And I know you do. I'm so happy that you all know about them. It's really wonderful. So can we roll the next video, please? <laughs> Just 
So this is them in the morning. Um, and Bonobo spend a lot of time in the water and Jane Goodall recently came to visit Lola and she was just so stunned with um, you know, how much time they spend in the water because she said she'd only seen that once or twice in chimpanzees. Um, so baby bonobos are absolutely king. They're practically like, I said they were female dominated, but I think they're actually baby dominated. Um, you can see this little baby can just get away with anything. Yes, Brian. Can I add something? Yes, go ahead. <laughs> I had to ask permission. <laughs> um, so one of the other things that we found by comparing how bonobos and chimps develop is it ends up that bonobos really are sort of like the Peter Pan ape uh, in our family. And one of the new ideas exhibited here of why bonobos might be so peaceful and able to get along is that they're really, they never grow up. Um, <laughs> They're, they're she a does bit, this for hours, by the way. This is Lakasi. She. They're, they seem to be a bit juvenilized in their behavior, um, and so if you look at chimp juveniles and bonobo juveniles, they're actually very similar. But what happens is when chimps go through puberty, they really change, whereas bonobos don't. They sort of stay in the same way as they were when they were younger. Um, so, you know, maybe we can just uh, be a little bit more juvenile and be better off. <laughs>